What's up, Waymakers? It's me, Mommy Suna. Finally, it's been a few months, but I'm bringing a paparazzi update to you. Some time has definitely passed since the last time we talked about paparazzi, <laughs> and some things have happened. So, I guess I should address the elephant in the room. If you guys have just been following me here, and you just kind of noticed, there was a period of time when I was posting with Croc the Crown a lot, with Tracy and Jerry, and then that all just kind of suddenly stopped. So, just to address it and get it out of the way, I had a personal falling out with Jerry. We were in a group chat together. It was literally just a chat about, it was called like paparazzi receipts or something like that. And it was just a place where anyone who had any paparazzi tea, they were just throwing it into this group chat. And I think there were like eight of us in there maybe. There weren't really conversations that would go on. It was just like an info dump. Well, one particular weekend, someone had broken into my car and stole a bunch of stuff from my husband and I. It was just like a particularly bad day and it was a Friday and my husband and I were like, you know what, let's go to Vegas. <laughs> there was just a lot of stress and we decided since, you know, we're in Phoenix, we're four hours away from Vegas, we're like, you know what? We're taking a family trip this weekend to Vegas. And I had told Jerry and Tracy and Caroline, like all those people that I, you know, was having a bad day. We decided we're going up to Vegas for the weekend, like just to get away from it all. No more stress, just to chill out. And then the last night that we were there, Jerry in the group chat decided to call me out for caring about my audience more than her. <laughs> It was just totally unnecessary. She exploded at me while she knew I was on vacation with my family. And I just said, no, I'm not doing this. I said, this is toxic. You knew I was having a bad week and on vacation trying to get away from things. And this, I'm not, no. I don't fuck around with that kind of behavior. I don't fuck around with that kind of toxicity. And that's exactly what it was. It was her deciding that at like nine o'clock at night while I was on vacation, she was going to call me out in a group chat around a bunch of other people being mad at me, not defending her more. I think what it was before that, there was like this stunt that she and Caroline pulled on Clubhouse that was like, Jerry went to jail or something, making people believe that Jerry was in trouble. <laughs> or some shit like that for like 12 minutes until they finally were like, oh no, actually J Jerry's not in jail. This was a joke. And I think I said on Instagram that I didn't agree with them doing that. I thought it was not a good idea, but I was nice about it. I just, you know, a lot of people were messaging me like, wow, they just did this thing. Like, I can't believe they are behaving this way. And I was just like, I have nothing to do with that. I don't agree with them doing that either. And I guess it caused a little bit of an uproar against Jerry. <laughs> And no, I didn't defend her because first of all, I'm not Jerry's keeper. I wasn't the one who controlled her. She's an adult and she makes her own decisions. But that being said, I was just like, no, I mean, just because, you know, I considered her my friend back then doesn't mean I have to agree with everything they do. And I was very upfront about that. I was like, no, I'm not gonna sit here and defend what you did, Jerry, because I don't think it was smart and I think it was stupid. Anyway, so I think that's kind of what started it. It's been a few months now since this all happened. So that's just pretty much the gist of it. It was a one and done thing. I said, no, nope, you know what? I don't have time for this behavior. I don't have the energy and I don't deserve this. So bye. And I deleted her on Facebook. I like stopped following her on places. You know, I had some people coming into my DMs like, Jerry's so sad that she made you upset. I was like, okay, well, I mean, she was being toxic and I don't give second chances when it comes to that kind of behavior. You don't get to walk all over me like that. You don't get to try to pull my emotional strings and try to get reactions out of me, especially when you know that I'm trying to de-stress right now not doing it. So that was it. That was the end of Savannah and Jerry. <laughs> but then like a week after that, she also had a falling out with Tracy and Caroline and Crack the Crown kind of imploded on itself. So then Jerry went and made her own new copycat of Crack the Crown. I think it was called like United Break the Chains or some shit like that. I don't really know. That group has also dissolved as far as I understand because Jerry is just a toxic person. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. But yeah, I mean, of course, I had a lot of people asking like what happened with crack the crown and I'm like I don't even fucking know all I knew was the moment Jerry freaked out on me I pieced the fuck out and I was like I'm not dealing with this like someone let me know when paparazzi does something stupid but like I'm not here in this sphere anymore I don't want anything to do 
with this kind of behavior. If that's the way you guys want to run things here, I don't want to be a part of it. Bye. So that's what happened with Crack the Crown. So I just want to address that. That's why Crack the Crown isn't really doing its thing anymore. Crack the Crown did start its own new group called like Leave Your Cult or something like that on Facebook. So that's where everything is going down over there now. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. You guys were right. And I guess I probably owe some of you guys an apology too because there were a lot of people when I was posting stuff with Tracy and Jerry that when it came to Jerry in particular, a lot of people were like, I think that she is too outspoken, too feisty, too this, that. And I, and I defended her because I was trying to be sympathetic to them having had the rug ripped out from underneath them as far as leaving paparazzi, leaving their cult. I would be mad too. I would be feisty too. If I went through the things that Jerry went through with paparazzi, like I would be pissed too. So I, I tried to kind of be understanding when it came to that. But you guys saw what I did not, what I kind of tried to convince myself was not there, that Jerry was just misunderstood. That's where I was, but you guys saw through that. And yeah, so I'm sorry for those of you who maybe, you know, might have commented on a paparazzi video before and I defended Jerry because I thought she was my friend. <laughs> Turns out friends don't treat each other the way that Jerry treated me. So, but don't worry. The moment that red flag went up for me, I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> now, as far as the Crack the Crown Facebook group goes, uh, Facebook actually took it down and there was some speculation to why. Tracy believes that, well, I think at first she believed that uh, people had just like mass reported the group for like bullying or something. Cause that's what MLM distributors do best. They just report everything that they don't like as bullying. <laughs> Cause we're all bullies, you know? But I think it ended up that the timeline added up to like, there were a bunch of going out of business sales pages for paparazzi that also got shut down on the same day. So they think that paparazzi had something to do with it, like shutting those groups down because when you're in paparazzi, it is against their policy to sell any of the jewelry for less than $5. So those going out of business sales, totally against policy. They didn't want to see it. It's seen as competition for those who are actively selling the jewelry still as a paparazzi consultant. So Tracy and Caroline have said that they think that that's more of what happened just because the timeline adds up to those groups all being taken down at the same time. There was also, they think possibly that paparazzi had taken like the use of their own copyrighted images. So like people selling the jewelry would use pictures that paparazzi had on their website, you know, and obviously that's like copyright infringement. I, I so that's probably more what happened. Anyway, Crack the Crown, that original Facebook group went away, but there is kind of a new one that's along the same lines. So that's that. But let's move on to what's actually going on within paparazzi now that we got all that bullshit out of the way. So as you guys do know, back in December, I believe, uh, before Crack the Crown <laughs> imploded. Tracy and Jerry had sent pieces out to a third party laboratory to be tested for heavy metals. And it turns out that it came back. The pieces that they sent out for testing. Most of them came back with dangerously high levels of lead, cadmium, arsenic, you name it. So this kind of started a whole movement, I guess, of people testing paparazzi jewelry. Someone that we have mentioned on the channel before, her name is Tamara Rubin, Lead Safe Mama, actually got her hands on some of the Starlet Shimmer pieces, which Starlet Shimmer was, and I say was because, okay, spoiler alert, they're not selling Starlet Shimmer anymore. But so Tamara Rubin has, I believe, what's it called? XRF. She is certified to use an XRF machine. So, I mean, listen, I understand that there is a little bit of controversy with Tamara Rubin's method using XRF testing. So I'll say this, you know, I'm not a scientist. The method that Tracy and Jerry used when they sent their pieces off to a third party laboratory, I want to say it's called like digestive testing where they literally like destroy the piece with the testing. With this, it's just like, I think it's like a little gun or something. It's a tool that you scan these pieces of jewelry with and then that way you're able to see uh, what the chemical makeup is of whatever it is you're scanning, uh, specifically heavy metals. She tests each item multiple times just to confirm the test results. Um, and so while you, a lot of people might say that's not accurate, what I like about it is that I think it at least gives us some kind of an idea that might help with like further testing. 
you know what I mean? But so this was published uh, February 22nd, 2022. And basically, long story short, she tested multiple pieces of Starlet Shimmer and each one of them came back with dangerous levels of something. So I just want to go through that first before we talk about paparazzi actually getting rid of Starlet Shimmer. So for example, there's this little like... <laughs> ugly ass tree ring, like a Christmas tree ring. Tamara's findings found that there are dangerous levels of lead, cadmium, and antimony in that particular one. And then there's another ugly Christmas ring <laughs> that again, lead, cadmium, and antimony tested pretty damn high. You got this yellow star that came up with lead, cadmium, and antimony, and also nickel. You got this pink and white flower with a bunch of lead, cadmium, and antimony, nickel, this pink enamel heart, this pink and green enamel umbrella. The umbrella one in particular, it says the cadmium found in this test says that it's illegal and makes it illegal to sell in the state of California, according to Lead Safe Mama. Cadmium is a well-established known carcinogen, so that's scary because this, might I remind you, Starlet Shimmer. Did I even say this part? No, you didn't. Savannah, you're an idiot. It's their children's line. It's the jewelry that they sold for children. Now, I think the labeling on Starlet Shimmer merchandise was like meant for ages 14 and up, which had to do with like the age. So I think technically because it was made for people 14 and up, it wasn't technically classified as like children's jewelry, but it was advertised as children's jewelry all the time. So make of that what you will. Antimony is also as recently as December of 2021 was added to the National Institute of Health's list of federally recognized carcinogens. So there's that. She tested a lot of pieces. I didn't realize there were this many. Lead limits for jewelry as of June 1st, 2020. Jewelry cannot contain any material that contains 500 parts per million or more lead by weight. It says here unplated metal less than 5,000 parts per million. Dude, some of these though, we're seeing like hundreds of thousands of parts per million, which is way too much. And that's scary. Um, as far as lead and cadmium in children's jewelry, children's jewelry. And that's why this is important here because again, Starlet Shimmer was always advertised as children's jewelry as far as paparazzi goes. No more than 100 parts per million for all jewelry components, including inaccessible component parts, and a surface coating that contains no more than 90 parts per million lead by weight is the limit. Again, you're gonna see a lot of pieces of jewelry that have been tested that are more than exceeding these limits. So that's scary. Like I said earlier, the accuracy of these XRF tests are questionable, but I do think that it at least gives us some kind of idea as far as what pieces probably should be avoided, uh, maybe should be sent for further testing, things like that, for like actual lab testing. So Starlet Shimmer was discontinued at the beginning of February and all of Tamara Rubin's testings came out like two weeks after that. So I think what was happening was all of a sudden randomly, paparazzi's all like, we're gonna discontinue this entire line. Conveniently after Tracy and Jerry had just released that a lot of paparazzi jewelry was being found to contain dangerous levels of heavy metals. How convenient that paparazzi announced that they would be discontinuing it like right after that. So I'm gonna read you what the consultants have been saying about this, like why this happened. And then, you know, we can discuss what we all think here. But this consultant says, while shipping delays and supply chain issues are more recent obstacles stemming from the response to COVID-19, the cost of goods has been rising for years. Everyone has felt this impact in some capacity as we've all watched the price of daily necessities climb from the gas pump to the grocery store. As a result of these ongoing increases, paparazzi has made the business decision that they will no longer offer Starlet Shimmer items. As of today, I will no longer be getting any more Starlet Shimmer accessories in stock. Once my current items sell out, that will be it. You know what that means. Grab these remaining Starlet Shimmer items now so you already have them on hand for your seasonal gifts and stocking stuffers. Remember, if you miss them now, you'll miss them forever. This paparazzi consultant says, I just learned that paparazzi will be discontinuing their Starlet Shimmer line. If you didn't already know, Starlet Shimmer was made for the younger females and only cost $1 per piece. Paparazzi consultants could purchase these in packs of 10 and sell them individually or in packs. I currently have a mixture in my store. Not only did young ladies 
ladies love this jewelry. Notice how she says young ladies and not children, but okay. But women often purchase these items for themselves. I do have more pieces that are not in my store yet and will hopefully eventually get them all in, but you can always purchase a surprise pack to receive a variety of pieces. And then there's this one, Starlet Shimmer. Unfortunately, paparazzi has made the decision to discontinue the Starlet Shimmer line. With the rising cost of materials, it was a decision of either discontinuing the line or raising the price of the product and the company chose to discontinue the line. With that being said, I have will be all I can get. I will be adding in what I have left over this next week. Sorry for any inconvenience. A few things, a few thoughts here. And this person is the only one I've seen to be like, you can either raise the price or just stop selling the line. And I'm like, if it's so beloved, and so many people are so upset with the Starlet Shimmer line not being a thing anymore, just raise the price. Double the price, $2 a piece instead of one? That's still a steal, and it's still cheaper than the rest of the paparazzi jewelry. Like, double the price, even triple, I don't know, 250 you know, so people will still buy it. These people will still buy your children's jewelry. But no, everyone is blaming it on the cost of rising materials, which obviously is a thing. But like, I mean, I guess they're probably definitely feeling the cost of more higher quality materials. They've obviously, when they made this decision, they were already under fire for using materials that contain lead and nickel, among other carcinogens. So it just seems, yeah, might as well just stop stop selling it, right? You can either comply with the standards of federal limits of lead and nickel and other heavy metals in jewelry. In doing so, you would have to probably purchase higher quality metals. Uh, and then at that point, it's like you can't make a profit off of that, selling it only a dollar or even freaking five dollars for the, just their regular paparazzi jewelry. I digress. So it's either that or just discontinue the line. And they're like, well, we don't want to be that guy who still selling jewelry that is just filled with heavy metal to children, no less. Anyway, I guess I just wanted to bring this up because I felt like this was really sketchy of them. I felt like the timing was just too perfect for them to decide while they're already under fire for the materials they're using. Just seems a little too convenient that they chose right now to discontinue their children's line. And that will segue us to the next portion of things I wanna talk about here when it comes to paparazzi. Um, they released a letter a few weeks ago, basically claiming that they're fine. Uh, all of their testing, it came back normal. Before I uh, get into yelling and screaming about how ridiculous this is, let me just read the letter to you. Dear consultant, Paparazzi Accessories LLC takes the safety of its products very seriously. Sure you do. Firmly stands by the quality and safety of its products and is committed to transparency, are you? Really? As part of that commitment, we recently sought out the nation's leading independent experts on conducting and managing technical studies addressing consumer exposure to lead and other heavy metals to test and analyze numerous accessories to confirm what we already knew about the safety of our products. That independent expert oversaw extensive testing conducted by an independent third-party laboratory experienced in testing consumer goods that is also accredited by the Consumer Product Safety Commission, the CPSC. The testing was thorough and took a significant amount of time because of the level of detail required to meet the various requirements set by the regulations. The testing was conducted in a accordance with ASTM F2999, which are the consumer safety specifications for adult jewelry, along with the testing methods used to determine heavy metal content, including CPSC, CHE1001, oh god, I'm not reading all those, 1002, 1003. <laughs> the laboratory tested multiple areas of each part of the accessories, including bracelet clasps, extension chains, jump links, wires, nests, and beads. For the necklaces, they tested the pendant jump links, pendant links, snake chains, extension chains, and clasps. For the earrings, they tested the wires, beads, backings, posts, and nests. For each of these parts, the laboratory tested for lead, cadmium, nickel, arsenic, and soluble heavy metals. As we expected, the testing conducted by the independent accredited laboratory and reviewed by the third-party expert found the accessories to be fully compliant with lead, cadmium, and nickel ASTM F2999 specifications. The results are consistent with the 
routine testing and sampling from CPSC certified labs that paparazzi accessories undergo before being offered for sale on the paparazzi website. We are pleased that the independent third party testing results confirm that these accessories fully comply with applicable regulatory requirements for metal and we are grateful for your continued support and dedication to paparazzi accessories. <laughs> That's putting it lightly. Sincerely, the paparazzi team. Okay, so let's dissect this. What you would expect from a letter like this, or at least what I would expect, is some motherfucking proof, baby. Because they would not have had to release a letter like this if there hadn't already been questions surrounding what the makeup is of the jewelry that they sell. Now, Tracy and Jerry, when they sent out their batch to be tested, I want to say it took a couple weeks. Again, this was released, I believe, in early April. And Jerry and Tracy had theirs done in December and released the results at the end of December. I'm pretty sure is what the timeline was there. So paparazzi has had four months <laughs> to release a letter like this. And, and you know, they said in there like, oh, the testing was thorough. So it took a long time. If Jerry and Tracy were able to get like a big handful of pieces tested in just a couple weeks? Why did it take you guys four months? The people that released those statistics that you're so worried about paparazzi also released the screenshots, the full reports of what the findings were. They listed the laboratory, which ended up being an issue because then a bunch of paparazzi huns decided to harass that laboratory and be and question the validity of those reports when the lab, they told Tracy and Jerry like, we don't want to work with you guys again because this is just too much and not only that apparently one of their machines like broke <laughs> I don't fucking know. I have no idea. All I know is the timelines don't add up to me. But even, you know, me as a layman, even if that is not even part of it, where are the receipts, paparazzi? We're at another standstill here where it's paparazzi saying, just take our word for it and trust us because we say so. I'm sorry, we're talking about heavy metal poisoning here. We're talking about lead poisoning. We're talking about some pretty serious stuff here. So if you're gonna try to tell us that you're still stuff is safe, when we've seen examples of it not being safe, can you please just release your test results? Not only that, clearly it wasn't a good idea for Tracy and Jerry to say what lab they used because they got harassed, but I'm sorry, but like paparazzi, how are we supposed to know that what you're saying is true and legitimate if we don't know who did the testing, how they did the testing? You know, if, if it's not something that we can verify for ourselves, then how are we supposed to trust what you're saying. It doesn't add up. And it's not that hard to just release the reports. Hi, sorry, I'm a little close to you now because I'm uh, nursing the lad. <laughs> anyway, the other thing is too, they're like, the results are consistent with the routine testing and sampling that paparazzi accessories undergoes before being offered for sale. Okay, so why aren't those results available for people to look at? If they undergo the kind of testing that paparazzi says that their jewelry does, then they must be sitting on like years and years of test results, right? Are you not, we're not nursing anymore. <laughs> the moment that they were met with this kind of scientific discovery, I guess, if you will, by Tracy and Jerry, that there is just a shitload of heavy metals in the jewelry, then why wouldn't they just release the reports that they already have? Because they would already have them if they were being tested regularly, right? You guys know what I'm saying, right? Like, I just feel like it doesn't add Add up. If they've had years and years and years of routine testing going, then they would have something to show for it, right? And we've never seen it once. So quite frankly, I am not in any place in my life where I would say, oh, okay, paparazzi says that they're good, so it's good. Like, no, it's not. It's very clearly not good. Of course, they're going to say it's good because their business is crumbling from the inside out right now, or the pyramid, if you will, is crumbling from the bottom up because everybody's leaving. But you know, their cult members members of course are going to believe everything that paparazzi says, but not us. Not us critical thinkers here, honey. I want to see the receipts. And finally, there's one more thing I want to cover as far as paparazzi goes. So they're having another in-person convention. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know. So just a quick recap, last year their convention ended up being a super spreader event and over 20 people, last number I heard was 25 people, but that's just word of mouth. It's been reported as many as 11 that I've seen reported on in the media, but last I heard was at the end of it all, after all the media stuff had died down, there's been over 20 people who have died because of last year's paparazzi super spreader convention in Las Vegas. So what does paparazzi do in the year of our Lord 2022? They buckle down and they go even harder this year. And we'll just go through uh, what their <laughs> announcement was as far as this goes, but I'm pretty sure that this is worse than last year. Now, obviously COVID cases are not what they were last year, but that doesn't mean that <laughs> it's not gonna happen again because this time last year, we all thought we were out of the woods and then Delta reared its ugly head and killed a bunch of people at the paparazzi super spreader event. We're not completely out of the woods yet. I don't care who wears a mask at the airport anymore or not. I don't care about any of that shit. What I care about is the fact that this virus can come back with a new variant at any time. And at this point, I don't think any of us are prepared for for it. But that's just speculation. You know, I'm hoping that this kind of destruction to human lives does not happen again this year at the paparazzi Vegas 22 convention, but I am not all that hopeful and I'll explain to you why. So Las Vegas, August 1st to the 2nd, 2022. They say like a moth to a flame, we are drawn to those who exude what we are striving for. Confidence, joy, hope, success, independence, the list goes on, we can all identify the person in our life who has that sparkle in their eye, an extra bounce in their step, and the ability to lift those around them just by being in their presence. They glow. <clears throat> the transformative power of confidence is not a foreign concept to paparazzi consultants. Every day you get to watch your customers light up when they put on a piece of jewelry. You get to see members of your team discover their own unique spark that can draw a crowd. And you get to feel the unshakable warmth that only comes from knowing you've shown up, given it your all, and found out that you are capable of more than you ever dared to imagine. You glow. So while that ring light on your live streaming parties may highlight your gorgeous features and fabulous bling, it's time for you to recognize the truth. It's your glow that leaves a lasting impression and a world filled with naysayers. We dare you to light up the room. It's glow time, paparazzi. Join us in Las Vegas, August 1st to the 4th, 2022 for our 11th annual convention, Glow. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's how they released it. A bunch of just ridiculousness. The power of confidence is not a foreign concept to paparazzi consultants. You're right. Some of these bitches have way too much confidence. I'm just gonna leave it at that. In a world filled with naysayers, we dare you to light up the room. Um, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are naysayers against paparazzi because, you know, paparazzi has haters for good reason. <laughs> Ooh, there's even a video about it. Are we watching this video? Yeah. One thing that I forgot to mention uh, that I was going to get to, but yeah, they're holding it at the MGM Grand again. Again. This is wild to me because the MGM Grand, they made a statement to Vox when Vox was reporting on the super spreader event last year. Here's what MGM Resorts, who held the conference last year, here's what they said. They said, nothing is more important than the safety of our guests and employees and that it has made vaccinating its workforce and community a top priority 
state as part of its ongoing efforts to increase vaccinations and do our part in helping end the pandemic. MGM noted that it offers groups holding events at its facilities an option to use a health pass with rapid testing and vaccine records as part of its Convene with Confidence program. According to MGM, paparazzi did not take up that offer. So here's MGM Grand throwing paparazzi under the bus last year like, hey, we're not at fault for all those people who died. Paparazzi's at fault. And then paparazzi comes back and they're like, hey, hey, we want to have another convention and MGM's like, come on in. No problem. Like as if, why? Why? Especially when you're a huge company like MGM, why would you host such a controversial conference for the second year in a row after people literally died from going to it last year on your property? You're gonna hold that same conference again. And again, I understand that like the world is different this time around this year. You know, the COVID stuff is dying down. And if it continues on this way, I'm sure everyone's gonna be fine. But, I mean, I say that. I can't, I can't say that. I take that back. COVID's still kicking people's butts, not as many as it was before. Hospitals probably aren't as overwhelmed as they were a few months ago, but that doesn't mean that shit's not gonna hit the fan again. We just have to be mindful of that and careful when you're gathering like this and it's extremely well known that now, I don't want to generalize but it just seems like first of all most of the people in paparazzi are giant Jesus heads and second of all and this is speaking from personal experience because a whole entire side of my family who is very very Christian is not vaccinated like none of them are <laughs> I just saw them for the first time in like two years a few weeks ago because I had been staying away from them until Sparrow was able to get vaccinated yeah people who have so much faith in Jesus tend to be a group of people who think they don't need the vaccine because they have the blood of Jesus. You know what I mean? Now, sorry to generalize. I know there are plenty of vaccinated Christians out there. I understand. But like to deny that a big group of unvaccinated people in this country, to deny that most of those people have a strong Christian faith is just wrong and ignorant. I'm sorry, but like, come on. So many unvaccinated people are Christian. <laughs> Given the God-loving amount of people in paparazzi that are going to be attending these kind of events, I think it's pretty safe to say that A, like 1% of them are gonna wear a mask, and B, like 1% of them are going to be vaccinated. And I want to say, you know, it probably won't be as detrimental as it was last year, but you never fucking know. So what are the details? Tickets to the 2022 convention will cost you $245 each per person. So that includes your admission to the event and the gala and whatever the fuck, and also a commemorative t-shirt. Wow, you can only purchase convention tickets in the paparazzi back office. You as a paparazzi consultant cannot purchase a ticket for another consultant or else that other consultant will be designated as a non-consultant guest and then they won't have access to other shit. Now get this and I don't recall this being part of the whole deal last time around but it says when purchasing your ticket please take a moment to confirm that all information is correct. A $10 fee will be charged to update registration details such as a misspelled name or a change in t-shirt size 10 bucks to change that you accidentally mistyped your name oh but here it gets worse a $50 fee will be charged to correct an incorrect consultant ID okay so so you just you're just trying to just bleed money out of your consultants is that what I'm hearing because $50 what the fuck why is that necessary you type in a number wrong and you're paying 50 bucks what the fuck? All attendees, with the exception of lap children, which a lap child, if you don't know, is basically a kid under two years old. Like when you're traveling, like if I were to get on a plane with Griffin right now, like he would be, he could be considered a lap infant. So like he can fly basically for free as long as he's sitting on my lap. So like that's, okay, you get it. Kids under two. If your kid is over two years old, you gotta buy a ticket for them. And that's fucking $245 to bring a three-year-old to this convention. Like as if they're gonna run remember it, let alone participate in anything. They shouldn't be there anyway, so get a fucking babysitter, please. But they do specifically have a spot for a COVID-19. It says all attendees will be required to adhere to all health and safety regulations as outlined by the state of Nevada, Clark County, and the MGM Grand. Okay, now what I will say is that the last time I was in Vegas, which again was like a 
couple months ago, something like that. Yeah, all public places indoors, you had to be wearing a mask. And this is how it was for the last convention. But guess what the fuck happened? As soon as they got in the doors of the convention, everyone took their masks off. You didn't see a goddamn mask in sight anywhere. They didn't enforce it last year. They're not gonna enforce it this year. If you are a paparazzi consultant and you're going into this thinking that you're going to be protected, that the MGM Grand is going to do everything that they can to make sure that you are convening with confidence or whatever the fuck it is that they said, let alone that paparazzi is gonna have your best interests at heart. Uh-uh, no fucking way. They didn't last year and people died. We understand these guidelines can change and we will comply with the regulations in place at the time of the event. As an attendee, you will be required to adhere to these regulations as well. Same shit they said last year, not a fucking mask in sight in any of the pictures we saw. So please. Also, again, just like last year, a $50 penalty fee will be incurred if you buy a ticket, if you purchase a $245 ticket and then you can't go regardless of the reason even if you test positive for COVID they're charging you 50 bucks forget that you had already spent $250 on a ticket that you're not going to use no you're not going to pay more to not attend the conference than the people who are attending the conference make it make sense this is a money grab now <laughs> the venue paparazzi has negotiated a room rate of $135 per night exclusively for those who will be joining us for glow please note that the rate does not include the nightly resort fee of $37 a night, which gives you Wi-Fi along with access to the fitness room and pool. In Vegas, this is non-negotiable. You have to pay that $37 every night. So $135 bucks plus $37 a night. What's that? $172 per night? Sorry, Griffin's making noise back there. He's got loud baby toys, you know. Just out of curiosity, I'm gonna see how much it would cost me to get a room. When is this? August 1st through the 4th? Okay, okay, I'll give it to them. So I am a, an MGM Rewards member and every time I go to Vegas, I gamble a little bit. I gamble, 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 die. So the cheapest room I could get is $171 a night plus the resort fee. So I would obviously be paying more money. So, all right, fine, I'll give it to them. They did negotiate a lower room rate, fine. That being said, I could definitely book a room the following week for $49 a night or if I went the next two weeks because I gamble, 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 die all the time, I could have my whole trip comped for four nights. <laughs> I could get that room for free, baby. But no, if you're gonna go the week of the paparazzi convention, their their rates are up <laughs> very high. Man, like imagine wanting to stay at the MGM Grand on your vacation to Vegas and that's the week you're going <laughs> and the prices are just so fucking high. But you're like, no, I wanna stay at the Emerald City. <laughs> of the MGM Grand, and then you're just inundated with middle-aged women and shitty bling the entire time you're there. <laughs> like, damn, that sucks. Yeah, you know, I could go to Park MGM that same weekend for 21 bucks a night. <laughs> Zoom. New York, New York for 33 bucks a night. Same exact weekend, baby. <laughs> See, like, you don't even have to stay at the MGM Grand. You can stay literally right across the street at Mandalay Bay for 47 bucks that same weekend. Or just a little bit of a hip, a hop, skip, and a jump away down the strip a little bit. 21 bucks a night at Park MGM. <laughs> but man, because they bumped those prices up so high, that makes me think that they're really expecting, like, a lot of people to go. And that's just concerning to me. They've got the whole agenda posted online. All of this sounds fucking stupid. <laughs> I basically already went through all of what's listed on their frequently asked questions. You know, having to pay the cancellation fee, all that dumb shit. Did I mention that tickets are non-transferable? So like if you buy a ticket and then like end up not being able to go, you can't give your ticket to someone else, which is ridiculous. All food is the responsibility of the attendee, of course. So that $245 ain't getting you shit as far as food goes. Oh, uh, yeah, again, no virtual option also. Forgot to mention that. Which, like, how fucking hard is it to provide that? Come on. If the annual paparazzi convention is so important to your business, to the operation of your $5 bling biz, why not give the opportunity for everyone to go, even if they can't travel? Because, yeah, 245 bucks to go to this thing, but then you're also paying for airfare. You're also paying for your fucking hotel for 170 whatever 
it was a night. This is expensive and not everyone can afford that. So like if it would be just a cheaper option to pay the 245 and just watch the convention and not have to pay for all that other shit. And of course they get talked down to for not going. Like, look, I, I got this screenshot of a paparazzi hunt that said, if you cannot afford convention, you're the bombshell who needs to be there. The excuse of like, I don't have the money. I don't have the literally thousands of dollars that it will cost me to go to this fucking convention. I do not have a thousand dollars to drop on this convention. You know what they're gonna say? They're just gonna look you in the eye and they're gonna say, well, hun, then you need to come. Because if you come to convention, it's only gonna make your business better, babe. And then you will have the thousands of dollars for next year. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's so full of shit. So that's basically all I have to say about the convention this year. Listen, I am not gonna sit here and be like, they shouldn't hold their annual convention because listen, every MLM is doing it still, but there are ways to make it safer and ways to make better decisions than they did last year. And are they doing that? No, they're taking zero precautions and quite frankly I just think this speaks to and shows the lack of responsibility that these people have the lack of care they have for the safety and well-being of their consultants and as far as I know they have not recognized the people who died last year at their convention so it's like please give me a fucking break dude anyway um one last thing I just want to watch a couple uh YouTube shorts of one of our favorite paparazzi teams. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the name of this team, but if you have been following paparazzi, uh, you probably know who these people are. One of these women is the lady who I think Mac has a video about her just straight up yelling about, I don't know, she went on a tirade just yelling about something. Mac has a video about it. They're just, they're really great people. I did feature them in one of my videos before too. They, you'll know. Apparently they're making YouTube shorts now. So let's just watch a few of them and just get inspired. <laughs> See, let's see what what the big paparazzi teams are doing these days to try to continue shilling their toxic fucking jewelry. Here we go. When you're on vacation, but still able to get women their fave jewelry. Listen, when you're on vacation, you shouldn't be fucking working at all. When you're on vacation, you should be on vacation. And also when you're in paparazzi, like how are people able to buy from you unless you're like sitting there doing your live stream selling it? I don't think it's as simple as she wants you to believe it is. When someone tells me this, let's see. Who told you that? <laughs> she's making this seem like, she's like, look at this wall of jewelry behind me. It's clearly a real job, like as if inventory loading doesn't exist. Like what she's showing here, like supposedly as proof that her network marketing gig is a real job. How does that prove anything, ma'am? <laughs> oh my God. Some of these are so fucking cringy. I just can't. Working online has changed everything. This is the same thing that we saw the other girl doing. When you're on vacation and still get to help women feel confident in jewelry. This isn't a flex. Why do they think this is a flex so much that they had to redo this YouTube short? You can't just make money from your phone. And she's all like, why not? Because that's not what you're doing. With paparazzi, you have to spend a lot of money first, and then you can possibly make that money back if you sell everything you ended up buying. It's not that easy. You don't just make money from your phone. And also I thought this was a super outdated thing that MLM said. Like I thought that we were onto it enough where they just stopped saying it, but nope, they're still <laughs> make money from your phone. What's this? This one's called to all my haters. Haven't you bothered me enough, you big banana head? What I want to say to the haters on my videos? Girl, we've heard you say a lot worse things than calling someone a banana head. This one says, this isn't true. Do they just, every member of this family makes the same TikTok over and over again? Because this one's like, you can't make money from the internet. It's not a real job. And she's like, why not? We get it. You guys have already done that one. The big banana head has been redone also. Why? Who else works from their phone? Hey. Yes. What are you doing? I'm working. It doesn't look like you're working. I'm working. Are you sure? I promise you I'm working. No, ma'am, you're not fucking working. Oh my God. <laughs> Thanks to all 12 of you. To the 12 people always liking my post. Y'all want anything from the gas station? They're almost there. They're almost self-aware. <laughs> you guys, I think this might be the cringiest YouTube channel on YouTube. <laughs>
No, seriously, these shorts, these little TikToks, these reels that they're making, not only are they all cringy, but the mother and the daughter remake each other's content. <laughs> There's no originality at all because one of them does it and then the other one does it <laughs> as a copycat. And then they post it on the same YouTube channel. Some of this has nothing to do with paparazzi. It seems like they're just trying to be relatable to get some views so that people will be like, oh, what else do these people do? Oh, they sell $5 jewelry, ew. There is copyrighted music playing over this part, so I had to cut it out, but just know that she's lip syncing and it's awful. I hate it. Oh, I'm clenching my butthole so tight right now. Let's hype each other up. When you see other women trying to succeed in the same business you run, you hype them up. Do you really in paparazzi? I'm pretty sure you guys all compete with each other. How many people were scared? Me too. I was really, really scared. Comment me too if you've been scared of social selling. Dude, none of us are scared. Like, no one is scared of it. We're just educated and we don't want to do it. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna end this here. <laughs> I think that's been enough cringe for one day. But now, my friends, it's time to thank my patrons and my members, my financial supporters. They get access to things like our private Discord server. We have a postcard club. Sometimes you get early access to videos and stuff like that. If any of that sounds good to you, you can go to patreon.com slash Marie, or you can click the join button beneath this video just whatever works for you whatever platform you prefer is fine by me and with that the biggest thing in the whole wide world goes to hula chow down janelle pratt cecilia dudek christy taylor elizabeth wyatt nitty dragon kutch squad 2.0 leanne molly wasilewski ryan Mew, sheila tapia tiff c turd ferguson hashtag get the w weatherington law alice w amanda shannon april limblom boris geller casey scraper katrina rosemarit daniel urena e higgins jerry Duncan, Hannah Morrison, Hannibal Crossing, Heidi Ha, Hippie Kansas Girl, Julia Wheeler, Kim Cartwright, Critter, Maddie Darley, Marley Fletcher, Princess Deathwish, Ray, Stephanie Hell, Tiffany Tuesday the 13th, Ian Shrouth, Laura Jensen, Mitchie 84, Tiffany Brust, Carol Jenks, Colin F, Jess Kronfeld, Emion, Jennifer Dyer, Kazzy, Auntie Lou, Krista Scantlin, Little Birdie, and Fallon Lowry, and to the rest of my fabulous financial supporters, thank you so much for being here and being you. Even if you're not a financial supporter, thanks for making it to the end of this video. I really appreciate it. Keep making waves, babes, and I'll smell you all later. Mommy Tsunami, out.